Today we're going to cover one-shot library instruction in Camborne's Theory of Learning by Glenn Norio Masuchika and Gail Bolt. Glenn is one of the superhero librarians at Penn State, and this is his superhero trading card, which I think is very cool. So the first thing that we need to talk about when we think about um, one-shot library instruction is an understanding of one so what one-shot instruction actually is. I think most of in this class understand it, but essentially it's this idea that we have one opportunity often to talk to students, present to students, everything that they need to learn about the library. And that can be in a session that's from one to three hours long, but I think typically is on the shorter end of that. Um, so things that might need to be covered in that would be library resources, library policy, the library website, and how to search databases. And a need to cover all of this often leads um, us to be sort of forced into choosing between critical mass instruction or use-oriented instruction because there's really just not enough time for both. So the next thing we need to talk about is what is the difference between critical mass uh, approach and user-oriented approach? So the critical mass approach is going to be a step-by-step -step demonstration from the library's homepage to the results of a database search, showing what each of the links on a given page can do, and introducing advanced search techniques like Boolean operators. In contrast, a user-oriented approach is going to be brief introduction of one or two databases, and then the remaining class time will be devoted to having students begin searching on their own for sources, hopefully related to a project they're currently working on. The instructor moves around the room, offering assistance and answering questions to sort of further that instruction. So we're going to be looking at these two approaches through the lens of Brian Camborn's learning philosophy. So a little background on Brian Camborn. He discovered that some students don't learn basic skills through rote memorization and habit forming behavior, which is kind of the format in a lot of um, public education. However, all students seem to be able to learn their native language. So this led him to considering the conditions of learning. Under what conditions are students able to learn? And he came up with eight conditions of learning. Um, the, for, as I explain each of these conditions, I want you to consider how they might be applied to um, the critical mass teaching approach, approach versus the use-oriented teaching approach. Um, so the first one is immersion. We often see this with language immersion programs. In this um, condition, student, the student is surrounded by the skill set they are expected to learn. The next is demonstration. Um, the student must be able to see that the thing that they are expected to learn is a thing that actually can be done. They have to witness someone else doing it. The third is engagement. Um, the learner has to actually want to learn the thing being taught experience it as learnable and be willing to risk learning it. This is the one of the most important conditions and so we're going to discuss it in a little bit more depth later. The next is expectations. The student must internalize the expectations of the instructor and the community. Do they believe they're expected to learn it? And this is going to vary from student to student. Um, the next is responsibility. This um, shows that the learner actually gets to decide how to engage and what to engage with versus what to ignore. Um, it's kind of the, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink mentality. Um, if a student is not, doesn't want to engage, we can't make them. Um, the next is approximations. So approximations is another word for mistakes. Essentially, approximations are viewed as part of the learning process. They're expected as a part of trial and error learning. The next is employment or use. Um, this, this is the idea that the skill is learned via opportunities to actually use it. Um, I'm sure you guys can see a big difference between critical mass versus use oriented when we talk about this particular condition of learning. The next is response. So in this one, the learner will receive feedback about their use of the skill. Um, keep in mind that this almost always occurs outside of the library instruction session via other instructors. So, you know, we don't get to evaluate so much um, their ability to do research, but their instructor will once they receive the project or the paper. So let's go back to the condition of engagement. 
Um, so there are some important things to keep in mind about engagement. One, learners must believe they are capable of learning the material. This can be done by scaffolding on current search behaviors. So indicating to the student, you know, you're able to do this kind of searching in Google or whatever. This is this is similar to that in this way and different to that in this way. So that's sort of scaffolding. The next is that learners must believe that what they are learning is valuable to them specifically. Um, the best way to have this uh, have students apply this is for them to come prepared with an assignment in mind um, as they're uh, viewing the demonstration or to actually work on in use oriented instruction. Um, the third is that the anxiety and risk of harm either emotional or physical must not be too great. The way we approach this is make it fun, have a relaxed attitude, reassure the students that they will learn as they go, and that mistakes are learning opportunities. Um, this is, I think, the biggest impact we can have here is our own attitude. So, um, as you guys can see, Cambridge conditions can really be applied to both use-oriented and critical mass instruction but use-oriented is really much more suited to his theory. Um, some conclusions. Uh, work with other instructors whenever possible so that you know what assignments the students have coming up and how you can apply your instruction to what they're actually expected to do for classes. The other thing you need to remember is that even within Camborn's theory, Learning is influenced by many factors that are out of the library instructor's hands. For example, student engagement um, and uh, student responsibility. We can influence that, but we cannot change it, alter it, or control it. So that's a very short little summary of the article, um, One Shot Library Instruction in Camborne's Theory of Learning by Glenn Masuchika and Gail Bolt. Thank you.